You know, pantheism means God's everywhere and in everything, and you're God and I'm God, and that flower's God, and that snake's God, and everything's God, and all that. Just pure silliness. That was the worm in the American apple. Democracies tend to pantheism because the spirit of the times in a democracy has power to change the very substance of religion. In, in other words, people get the notion in a democracy that when they get a majority vote, they can do anything they want to, even change the Bible, and cancel out and repeal what God Almighty said about this or that, exactly what's happening in this country today. In 1988, Gore persuaded us that he was a good Bible-believing Baptist from Carthage, Tennessee, that he was opposed abortion, he opposed the gay rights agenda, and he did. Yeah, he was here at the House in 1989, after, the year after he ran for president. Since I knew Gore, I was able to get him to come to Kansas to be the keynote speaker at our convention. We had the event at my house. You know, I'd, I'd been a, a coordinator of his campaign in, in Kansas in 1988. Um, and, you know, he had volunteers that came through the state and they worked out of our office. And, He's, he's was and I assume still is extremely courteous and given what what his wife had done with the lyrics and rock music and so on you know I certainly felt that he was uh, was a religious person because Gore was against fags against abortion and we were helping him we put up his people all the people in this church kept his people in 1988 um, there were a lot of Democrats running for president. I don't know if you remember that year, but there was probably eight or ten all told because it was a wide open year with Reagan leaving. Uh, and I, you know, I spent some time and looked at the field, and I felt like he best represented the uh, what I what I would call the conservative wing of the Democratic Party. I'm telling you, the boy has backslid on us. He wouldn't dare oppose the gay agenda. He wouldn't dare lift a voice to tell any truth now. In fact, he's doing just the opposite. But you know, he don't have a single principle that's not for sale. Expediency is his only rule. He wanted to become a national candidate, and he saw to do so, especially with the Democratic Party, that was the only way he could go. And he's, you know, pretty much sold his soul, if you will, for votes. Bush had to make concessions to the fags too, met with them down there in Austin. Like, I think I've told you this before, I went to the Democratic National Committee meeting in Washington, D.C. in 1985, and the homosexuals were outside the hotel. It was the same hotel where Reagan was shot. Remember that? And they were outside, the gay rights people were outside holding signs. Three years later at the National Convention in Atlanta, they were inside as delegates. Stand up on a big platform, right over here just behind me to the right, was the Staples Convention Center. Right over here to my left was Bunker Hill. And I'm standing there preaching this same thing and saying, we have come from Kansas to inject a little sanity and truth into this insane orgy of fag lies going on over there, calling itself a Democratic National Convention. I'm also telling you that probably the biggest hypocrite on the earth today in these times is Senator Joe Lieberman. Biggest hypocrite in the world today. I can prove it and document it. That hypocrite is so holy he won't flip a light switch on Saturday, but Monday he'll go down to the courthouse and slough off the wife of his youth. And take another called Hadassah and fornicate with that poor every night. It's Bible. It's Bible. That's in Joe's Torah. They got Joe Lieberman in there, you know, they're talking about God every other sentence. What they're doing, it, it, what they're trying to do is to wash away the last several years of the crud from Clinton by talking religion now. If the, if the Republicans were talking religion like the Democrats are, there'd be a hue and cry from the media that they're trying to mix church and state. It's kind of like Clinton walking out of church with his Bible, you know, during the Monica Lewinsky thing. Give me a break. It's, it's just a ploy to try to play to the, the voting masses. 
Holy Joe, Joe Lieberman, <clears throat> world's biggest hypocrite. Hypocritical, nonsensical triviality is like not using a pen on the side of just so holy. You're a hypocrite, probably the biggest hypocrite in the world today. And you pick up that pen on money and write laws, strengthening the right for these fool American women to kill their baby. Joe Lieberman is one of the biggest baby killers, certified in the United States Senate, and hence with that power in the United States. I mean, how any intelligent person can listen to that pony and and see him any other way than than a 24 karat pony? I got an invitation to the presidential inauguration in 1992 from Al Gore, and my recollection is, although I could stand corrected, I got one in 1996. We went into the inaugural festivities, and then we went outside and picketed certain things like fags. He had fagged wall to wall at that inaugural. Clinton. I'm going to give you my candid gut feeling based on what I know of, of uh, Mr. Gore. I, I think I know him better than the average person. I really think what he's done, although I'm quite unhappy with it, in selling out to the homosexuals and going to all these political fundraisers and so on, I think when the rubber actually hits the road, I don't think he would be near prone to be as extreme and as dedicated and committed. I don't think he's quite the, as perverted, if you will, as Bill Clinton. I think Clinton really felt it down deep inside. I think he's, I think he's a, a pervert. I think Gore's doing it more for political expediency. <laughs> you know, we picketed Gore so many times, you know, he knows us real well, and he, he's getting madder and madder all the time. Picketed his dad's funeral in Nashville, and he saw us. And we picketed him when he went to make a speech at Harvard, you know, that Kennedy School of Business at Harvard. And they got a nice place there, ideal for picketing, where it comes across that James River and sweeps out broadly. I mean, it's just wonderful. Big, broad streets, traffic flowing in every direction. And there we were, with Gore's picture on those signs. He's in a limousine. He sits up there looking like that, just looking like, looking from one little sign to the other. These uh, politicians, uh, under pressure from majoritarian forces, dominated by clever, talented, ambitious, eager, diabolical, homosexual activists, have got these idiots believing that if they vote in Congress, they can say, it's okay to be gay. That's what the devil told Eve and Genesis 3, has God said not to eat this fruit? She said, God said, if you eat that fruit, you're going to die. The devil's next words were, ye shall not surely die. But God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, you'll be as God, knowing good and evil, a tree to be desired to make one wise, pleasant to the eyes. But the devil persuaded her that the word of God means nothing, that there are no teeth in it, and no repercussions of divine and eternal uh, ramification. Boy, that, now that is very good preaching. I gotta remember some of that stuff. Some, some days you spit it out better than other days, you know. <laughs>